Hey guys, Christian from Shadow Super Films back here again with David once more doing another Movie Talk podcast. So before we get into this, be sure to hit like and subscribe for more content in the future. And so anyways, go ahead and say hi, David. What's up, guys? Alright, so uh, do you have any announcements for your channel before we get rolling on this? Yeah, so I think I mentioned it in the last podcast. Everything is going to be changing. Um, there's big changes coming. We're kind of restarting the channel. It's it's kind of funny. I've been gaining <laughs> subscribers and I haven't posted anything in like three months. Um, but we're going to have all the short films that I've promised you guys, all the mini series, all the long films. Um, there's going to be a couple other things too, so stay tuned for that in the coming weeks. Um, I don't really want to give any details out, but that's mm. all I got. All right, so anyways, be sure to give him some love. I'll leave the link to his channel down in the description as, long, or as well as links to all of our social media sites and uh, short films. So this week, or this month, actually, we are going to be talking about superheroes, uh, well, just superhero movies anyways. So we didn't get any questions this time around, but just to remind you guys, we are taking questions, I think up to like three or five or something like that. And we'll do those as, like, pre-podcast questions, and we'll answer them as best we can. But once again, we didn't get any this month, so we'll just go ahead and jump straight into this. So we'll start off with our uh, top three superhero movies. Uh, did you want to go first in this one? Or do you want to be um, Sure. Third, let's see. Ooh, that's tough. For number three, I'd have to say The Avengers, the first one, the original one. The reason being is that, you know, it was the first time we ever saw, you know, Captain America, Iron Man, Thor, Hulk, Black Widow. Hawkeye, all of them together um, in one, and it was sort of your, um, you know, typical, you know, every all the heroes get together and they defeat uh, one bad guy, and it was, I don't know, it was a great connection um, for the Marvel Cinematic Universe, um, which kind of led to the other movies uh, from Civil War and, you know, all these other movies, Iron Man 3, and it kind of built the platform all the way leading up to Infinity War coming out. Story wise, I thought it I thought it was okay. Um, I didn't really have too many complaints about it. Um, I loved how they didn't change the actors of each character. They actually had each um, actor, um, like Chris Hemsworth and Art Robert Downey Jr. Well, they did know, change the, the Hulk though. They did get a different yeah, actor for that. that... Him, but I I didn't mind that they changed yeah. Mark Ruffalo. Um, I thought he did a better job, and it was a little bit more of who he should have been, but that's me personally. Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> I thought they did a good job with Loki um, being, you know, the bad guy. Um, and that he's not the ultimate bad guy in it. Um, yeah. And I don't know. I just, for me, that, that, was a, that was a good movie to kind of get reintroduced to the Marvel Universe. Because at that point, I really hadn't followed it mm -hmm. up until then. I was like, whoa, they're all together. Let's see, number two... That's hard. I'd have to say Deadpool would probably be number two, mostly. not. And, you know, I'm not doing these movies because I think they're the best ones, but because they're my favorite. I like Deadpool just because we've never had a movie for him. We've never really had anything for him. Um, I, you get, like, a glimpse of him in Origins, but that's, like, about it. And that's even a terrible glimpse of that because they just yeah, screwed him up so badly. I didn't, <laughs> don't even get me started on X-Men Origins for... For, for how they handled Deadpool. That was just... He was really cool at the beginning, though. That was pretty cool. Yeah, I just... I did not like how they ended that. It was... Mm -hmm. Anyway, moving on. It wasn't all... You know, it wasn't the best movie out there. Um, but it, it was hilarious. And it, it matched Deadpool's character. Mm -hmm. Like, it, they nailed it. Um, with, with with their actor, I mean, they they, they couldn't have picked a better person for him, mm -hmm. like, um, for his for his character, and I mean, there's a lot of things that they referenced um, from the comics um, that I really like, and they nailed it perfectly with his character. Um, there there was a lot of just really dumb parts though mm -hmm. that that made me laugh, um, and I don't know if that's good or bad. Uh -huh. bad, but, um, I don't know. I, I I've always loved that sort of anti-hero where you know he's he does good, but he does it in different ways. He does he uses his own methods, which may not be good, but his ultimate goal pretty much is good. I don't know. Yeah, that's up. To, that's up for you guys to decide. Well, it was Deadpool was also nice to see Marvel finally going to the R-rated scene because they had stepped out or they hadn't participated in that for the longest time and it really honestly all of the x-men movies 
or any movie involving Wolverine just should have been R rated like the whole time because that like a lot of their characters just need that R rating to be able to unleash themselves as who they truly are rather than you know having to hide behind this barrier of censorship which really just kind of nullifies the character and makes them a little more obsolete than they should be yeah I mean and going off topic just slightly here I'm kind of hoping that's they do something similar to that for the uh, Carnage and Venom movie that's ah, yes. coming out. I really hope they don't tone it down. I mean, with the names Carnage. And well, and if I remember that. correctly, those are also being made by Sony. So the and actually, if I remember correctly, I think I did see that they were planning on doing rated R at least for Carnage. I don't remember about Venom, but I do remember I'm, seeing that somewhere. I'm just I'm hoping that they don't tone it down. It, I mean. The Carnage is one of my favorite um, Marvel characters, but mm-hmm. we're, we're gonna move on to that. We'll get on to that. Yep. Um, number one, I'd have to say this is gonna be so funny, but I'd have to say Wonder Woman. Um, hmm. I really, really loved that movie a lot. I mean, I, I don't want to you know give any spoilers because it, it just came out, but there's so much about this movie that's there that that pulled off from Batman versus Superman and you know we all kind of know how it, how people feel about Batman versus Superman you either mm-hmm. like it or you don't um <clears throat> and i thought that it was a great step towards bringing the justice league together i love how i, I love the actress she's she's amazing she she does very well she projects very well she uh, there was a lot about the movie that i really love that's just too much to explain um, right now, so if you guys haven't seen it, go see it for yourself and get an opinion on it. It's one of my favorite. Uh, it's probably my favorite movie, uh, superhero movie, right now. That might change. But, well, uh, given the future with Marvel at the moment, yeah, I could easily see that changing. Um, so I mean, I really love um, Guardians of the Galaxy one and two, mm-hmm. um, but they weren't enough for me to put them on the top three. Maybe four or five. But. Yeah. All right. So I guess I'll go and get started with my list. So. Uh, the very first on my list is X-Men. Um, I was almost thinking Avengers, but then X-Men kind of popped into my head. The reason I liked it so much was because, I don't know, for some reason mutants just fascinate me. Like, the idea of mutants and, like, all of their different powers were just so cool. And I felt it was just really, like, it was really cool to see it from Marvel. And, you know, once again, seeing all these different characters, like uh, Wolverine, Professor X, you know, all these different mutants with all these really cool powers was just awesome. And even then, it still had, like, a great story, of course, you know, these mutants being rejected by society, which it's not only just, like, a movie for entertainment, but also kind of one to get us thinking, like, in the back of our minds, you know, like, well, maybe we shouldn't be just casting these people out so soon, because there's a lot of cases in society where that just happens anyways, not necessarily with mutants, but with just, like, specific groups of people in general, so that was kind of cool that they had that little moral background to it as well to kind of just make people think. So, and I've just, I've always been a huge fan of Marvel. That's why all three of my movies on my top three list are from Marvel. Because um, they just do a, such a good job with their movies. Their TV shows, not so much, but their movies are excellent. So, once again, X-Men was just really cool seeing all these different powers and just these two sides clash, uh, clashing and all that. And then um, my second on my list is Iron Man. Because, I mean, Robert Downey Jr. is Tony Stark. Brilliant, like, one of the best decisions Marvel's ever made. Robert Downey Jr. was so fitting for that role. And the movie was so good because it just... It it still had that comedy aspect. It's like all Marvel movies where there's that uh, humor in there, but then you're also getting, like, the serious action scenes. And I don't know. It was just such a fun experience that I could not help but enjoy it the entire time that I watched it. I don't know. It was just a really intriguing movie that constantly kept me wanting to see the next scene and just, like, looking forward to the rest of the movie. And it's one of those movies that, you know, it doesn't feel that long. You go through it, and you're like, wow, that went by really quick, but it was so enjoyable the whole time. So that that was kind of a huge thing for me, too. And then, of course, the technology, all that, seeing all those technological advancements and the nice uh, sci-fi effects was really cool. I always enjoy seeing stuff like that. I don't know why. I just do. So, yeah, that's I mean, it. it. Oh, yeah, go ahead. I can kind of see, you know, why. I, I mean, I almost picked um, Iron Man 2. It was in the back of my mind, mostly because, you know, it was the first real movie that they had that started the MCU Mm -hmm. Um, it set the foundation for all of it yeah Um, and basically the Avengers revolve around him Mm -hmm. even the split Avengers they revolve around him everything is because of him yep Um, 
Well, like, you, you know, even be... see that at the end of each one of the other Avengers movies. Tony Stark is the one that comes up and talks to them. Yeah. Like, the Incredible Hulk, he's in the bar. At the end of Thor, I think he comes up and talks to him. Either that or S.H.I.E.L.D. that did it. I don't remember. Um, but, yeah, no, like, you see him gathering all the Avengers, basically. And then, of course, you know, Stark Towers is, like, their headquarters. So, yeah, of course, yeah. Tony Stark's just the head of all of it. You know, he's the brains and the money behind it. So that was really cool to kind of see them starting to build that up as well. Yeah, I'll admit that was really cool. And then for my number one superhero movie of all time, at least at this point in my life, is Doctor Strange, without a doubt. That was like no questions, no hesitation for me. Because I'm a huge fan of like any sort of magic or, you know, just anything kind of like what they did with Doctor Strange. So uh, first off, of course, their cinematography and special effects was amazing. That looked so good and they you know i mean like i said all the special effects that they did for all of their magic and everything they had in there just looks so so good and then like so story wise as well i mean granted the story wasn't like all that huge but it was still really fun to see and of course you know marvel there's gonna be that humor in there so there was a good amount of humor that i really enjoyed but no just seeing dr strange turn from like the man he started off as going through this tragic event and then like rebuilding himself was just really cool, um, you know, to see him change and go from being, like, this real arrogant, uh, rich man into a broken-down, poor man that's trying to just get his life back together, and then ends up finding something totally different and becomes a hero, and it was, I don't know, I just really enjoyed the whole movie, and, like I said, I'm just a huge fan of, like, magic or anything that, you know... Like, the few times in there where it kind of was almost like an acid trip. I don't know. Those were so fun. I don't know. I just, yeah, yeah. I enjoy watching that, so. I mean, and Doctor Strange, totally, I don't know how it slipped my mind. I would probably put it at number four, maybe almost number three. Again, you know, they referenced um, Stark Towers. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I love how he's going to be, they already confirmed that he's going to be in uh, Infinity War, which is, you know, it. That's just amazing. Well, I mean, which would make sense because it, you see at the end of Doctor Strange and the ending credits that he's already, you know, he's going to be in Thor Ragnarok, yeah. of course. Yeah, no, and, and when I saw that too, like, I was just like, oh, oh. please, please just confirm it. Like, please. Oh, that's that's and why I'm so hyped for Thor Ragnarok, Ragnarok. Honestly, I haven't really cared for the Thor movies that much, but I want to see this one because of Doctor Strange. Yeah, no, oh, I'm... Uh, there's so much coming out. It's it's oh. too much for me to handle. And of course, like the actor they got for Doctor Strange, Benedict Cumberbatch is oh, he was such a fitting actor for that. Benadryl Cumbercube. <laughs> all the different names out there, all the different memes. So he's he's a great actor. I love him in everything he does, I, or I that I've him. seen, anyways. Like Sherlock. Oh, he did an amazing job in that. So that was also another huge thing. And then, um, yeah. So like I said, it, like you said, being in Infinity War, that that is going to be awesome. I can't wait to see that. But also the fact that Marvel finally, like, got around to saying, you know, well, the Avengers protect Earth from all of these, like, physical dangers, but who's going to protect it from the magical dangers? Well, then, you know, Doctor Strange and the other yeah. mages come in, and I'm like, oh, dude, that is so cool. So, really happy to see that one. Um, but yeah, that's that's it for my top three. Anything else you wanted to put in some input for, or? Um, not really. Uh, all right. I'm- I'm just dying to get to the next oh. part. Oh, the the least favorite movie? Is that what you're waiting for? Yes, sir. All right, well, let's go ahead and get started. I'll let you start off with that one since you're so excited. Go ahead and go for it. Well, I, I think you already know what I'm going to say. Yep. It's Suicide Squad. <laughs> yep. I'm pretty sure everyone saw that coming. At least anyone that's watched this far probably saw that coming. I mean, I was... I'm not going to lie. I was very excited... When I first saw that that was going to be a thing, I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. this is cool. I mean, and Deadshot, like, oh, wow. Yeah. And when I saw Will Smith was doing it, I, I was very unsure at that point. I was like, I don't know how this is going to be. Yeah. Um, and the Joker that they got was, oh, I, my God. I can't stand it. I, I can't. I okay. don't understand I will say one thing about his Joker, though, is his Joker was intended to have a Harley Quinn. Like, if Harley Quinn had not been in the picture at all, his Joker would have been the absolute worst that you could have ever seen. Like, even cheesier than, like, the first one from the original show. Yeah, it would have been that bad. But no, Jared Leto, 
oh, he's not really that bad of an actor. He was just not meant to be Joker. And once again, he needed Harley Quinn to be a character at all. Now, Heath Ledger, he was a Joker on his own. Now, if they if they could have still had him, that, that would have made it a lot better. But Well, actually, he wouldn't have really fit in that movie, though. That movie was too poppy. I feel poppy. like... I feel like um, the Joker is dependent, like you know, like you said, on the actor, mm-hmm. and if they're gonna put Harley Quinn in there, they can't really have a Joker that's gonna, you know, steal the show. Like, yeah, Heath Ledger, yeah, Heath Ledger would not have fit in there, sadly. The but. whole point of Heath Ledger was that he was the pretty much the main villain, and that no mm. one else, would, uh, you know, be with him on his side. He was more of the lone, a lone villain, a lone Joker. Yep. Um, and you know, as we all know, there's many different versions of the Joker. Um, but I just didn't like how, yeah, and like you said, he's not a bad actor, but I just didn't like how they, how they executed it. It wasn't, I don't know. It was just not my cup of tea. Um, and then the story on, <laughs> oh yeah, they're like, what story? <laughs> there, there was nothing. I mean, it was literally just fanboy pleasing. Yeah, it was, it was so just convoluted and scattered. Like I almost, dare say it, it was almost as bad as Warcraft. I'm not gonna lie. In terms of like a storyline, it was almost okay, as bad yeah, as Warcraft. In terms of a story, but I, yeah. I mean, I don't think. <laughs> no, it's not nearly as bad as Warcraft. Well, just in terms I of storyline, Warcraft takes that takes that place still. Yeah. <laughs> oh, of course, definitely, without a doubt. Just just in story wise. Oh yeah, in story, yeah, I'd have to say they're both pretty. They're both pretty bad. Yeah. Um, but it's just they could have done so much with it. Mm-hmm. I mean. They the had the hype. They had plenty of hype for it, but they just... Uh, the casting to me wasn't bad, and I, I, I was going to give Will Smith a chance, honestly. I was like, you know what? It might not be that bad. Um, but again, with the story, it, it's just... I mean, I kind of saw what they were trying to do, but they mm-hmm. were focusing on switching between each character's story. Yeah. And just trying to throw in a villain. It's like, oh, there's your story now. But it was supposed to be one of the suicide squad or suicide squad members too that ended up becoming the villain. And you're just like, oh, yeah, yeah. No, that was that was a real oopsie on DC's part there. They, uh, yeah, like granted they hadn't done well with movies before that, but Suicide Squad, oh, that's a real kick in the nuts. No, I I don't follow DC as much, so and I know you. I, I really don't either. It's like I'll watch them every now and then, but it's like it's not worth my time, honestly. Because so then, let, so then, tell me if you if you don't know, that's fine. But is Suicide Squad part of their like cinematic universe technically, like with BVS and Wonder Woman and Justice League, or is it? Um, I don't remember if it was actually included in that, but. Oh god, I can't remember. I don't even think it's really supposed to be connected to the universe at all. I think it was honestly supposed to be its own standalone movie. Uh, Especially with watching, like, Arrow and stuff, because, you know, you see Deadshot in there, and he's so different. Yeah, no, but when I saw... um, When I saw Batman in uh, Suicide, when we saw saw him for, like, what was it, three seconds? Yeah, like the car scene. Yeah. I could have sworn it was the same Batman, but I don't even know. I mean, it could have been, but, like, you really don't get a good enough look to tell. Yeah. And it's just, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It, was, it was just a bad movie. <laughs> they, they, could have, they could have skipped that whole thing. Or, you know, actually taken the time to do it right, which clearly they didn't. But, yeah, you know, that's on them. We can't really change anything about it. We just kind of have to live with that mess being in this world. So, um, my least favorite movie is X-Men Origins Wolverine. And I was uh, I was debating between this and Suicide Squad. I, I knew you were gonna pick that. Oh, of course I did, dude. I once again diehard Marvel fan here. I have to talk about this. So I I'm just really glad that they decided to ignore that movie and the rest of their universe because had they not, oh, life would suck. Because it was mostly the end of it that was the problem. It was mostly just the ending of that movie that was the real issue, and that was because they had to take Deadpool and mutate him with a crap ton of other stuff and just make him this monstrosity and totally ruin him. Like, he's supposed to be the merc with the mouth, but they shut his mouth. Like, they literally seal his mouth. Yep. And they just made him, like, the absolute worst villain you've ever seen in Marvel history ever. And he wasn't even intended to be the villain. It was supposed to be Sabretooth. That was supposed to be the main villain of the film, and he was until the end. (laughs) And it's just like, what? 
so of course, you know, you see Sabretooth there, but you don't see him in any of the other movies either. And it's like, where is your continuity, Marvel? Like, that's that's one of the only issues I have with, and like, the Marvel genre, or Marvel area at all, well, is that movie, because they screwed up so much. That's why I was so happy to see the Deadpool movie, because mm-hmm. it, it was such a great comeback from that. Oh, yeah. Like, Everyone was, like, so worried, like, oh, my God, we're never going to see Deadpool again because they killed him off at Origins. And then they announced the Deadpool movie, and everyone's like, oh, my God, yes, please do it. And then when they said rated R, everyone was, like, screaming at the top of their heads. Like, yep. I can tell. <laughs> like, oh, there was such a hype behind that movie, and it was so good. I enjoyed it a lot. I just, I it was not it. enough to rate it as one of my top three. It was probably about number four. I'll admit, Ryan Reynolds did a great job for that. He definitely deserved the role, and I'm kind of excited to see Deadpool 2. Um, I, oh, I still I want to see it so badly. I'm just glad that... Um, why can't I remember? Hugh Jackman, Hugh there Jackson? we go. I'm glad that he uh, he refused to make an appearance in Deadpool 2, because Ryan Reynolds kept trying to get him to like uh, come in as Wolverine for Deadpool 2, oh, yeah. but he turned it down, and I'm like, oh, thank God. Yeah, just let Logan be it. Let that be the end, please. Yeah. Granted, it wasn't the uh, off topic. Logan is off topic, <laughs> but yeah, X Men Origins Wolverine just oh they trashed it. They trashed it so bad. Yeah, Granted, I mean they still got the part with Stryker and him getting his adamantium right. Like his, his the actual origin story was just fine. It's when they went past the origin story. Like it it really wasn't an origin story at all. You get that for like the first twenty minutes, and then the rest of it's just yeah. I mean, granted, if you want to go... Or, okay, technically it was X-Men Origins, so it does kind of make sense, because it shows how he gets drafted into the X-Men, basically, but still, most of it didn't really have all that much to do with his origins, to be, yeah. like, to be completely honest. So, yeah, there were so many things Marvel could have done to make that a great movie, and, you know, when, of course, you see X-Men Origins on the title, you're like, oh, this might actually be a series, kind of like what they did with the Avengers, except just doing it after the movies have been released. So, like, they're coming out with individual movies for everyone. So you're like, oh, maybe they'll do, like, single stories of everyone later in the future. And then everyone watches the movie and they're like, okay, this is trash. Don't do this ever again. <laughs> so I'm kind of happy that Marvel didn't do that. But at the same time, I kind of wish they did because they probably would have done a better job on it the next time. But who knows? So that that's just kind of my little rant on X-Men Origins. I have always disliked that movie for several different reasons. And, yeah, it's it's just ridiculous. So now that uh, now that, that agonizing part of the podcast is over, <laughs> let's go ahead and uh, move on to the superhero movie we are most excited for. Just uh, you know, coming up sometime in the near future that's actually been announced. Yeah, I'll, so I'll go ahead and go first this time. Uh, mm-hmm. So I'm, I, I kind of want to say Infinity War, but at the same time, that's quite a ways away. So I'm gonna go with Thor Ragnarok, like I mentioned earlier, because of the fact that well, Doctor Strange is involved. So of course I'm gonna be excited. And Thor, I'll admit, is pretty awesome. It's just his standalone movies. He's not really all that good. He's more of, like, the support role. The guy who's just kind of there and really yeah. helps to be there, but should not be on his own. Like, the first Thor movie was... Um, actually, I'll, I'll get more in-depth about this later, because I have this in the next segment. But So, anyways, I, I'm really excited to see those two paired together, because that'll be really fun. And then, you know, of course, having Loki there will just make it that much better. But there's just so many fun things that I could see this movie turning into based off of, like, the trailers that I've seen and, like, you know, just all these little snippets of information that I've been getting. And it, it looks like a lot of fun. So, and, of course, it's another build-up to Infinity War because I believe they're going for another Infinity Stone. So that'll be a lot of fun, too. Yeah, no, there's not really not really much else to talk about. Oh, I do love Asgard. Asgard is beautiful. Like, I, I actually mm-hmm. rewatched Thor recently and I didn't realize how beautiful it was before. It's clearly inspired by, like, I don't even know. It's like kind of dwarven type architecture, like in fantasy. It's kind of like that type of architecture that you see, kind of like a dwarven elven mix is yeah, kind of yeah. what it looks inspired by, which is really cool. I love that type of architecture, so that looked really awesome. So, yeah, that's that's the movie that I'm most excited for. I think that was supposed to come out this year, like November 3rd or something like that, I think. So, really hyped to go see that one. I might go see that in theaters, actually. Well, you mentioned Infinity War was a while away. Two years, yeah. Well, 2019, yeah. roughly, is when they said it was. For me, I'd have. I'm looking more forward to Infinity War than oh, Justice yeah. League. Like again, I'm a Marvel guy. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't really follow DC that much. Yeah, um, it'll be interesting to see. See it. I'm definitely gonna go see it. But yeah. I mean, I, I don't have high expectations for it. Uh huh. Anyway, I'm picking Infinity War. I mean, just because 
you're going to have all of the Avengers, the split Avengers. You're not the split Avengers. You're going to have the Guardians of the Galaxy. You're going to have Doctor Strange. You're going to have all these people. They're all going to come together to just fight Thanos. And this is this. I mean, and there's other stuff on the side too. But mm-hmm. I mean, this is you know what we've all been waiting for. This is the buildup that the MCU has started with the first Iron Man. Mm-hmm. This is what I want to see and I'm just hoping hoping that they don't kill I mean they might have to but that they don't kill off like Captain America or someone in the first one I mean I'm 95% sure someone is going to have to die in the first one something's going to have to happen but I know that none of the Guardians of the Galaxy won't die because they're scheduled to have a third movie after Infinity War so I'm sure they'll be okay but I think one of the Avengers is probably going to might be Captain actually, America. If I remember correctly, I think Captain America is actually supposed to die before Infinity War. I'd have to go check again. I can't remember where I got that from, but I remember hearing that somewhere from someone that Captain America is supposed know, to die before Infinity War. I know Chris Evans, his contract goes all the way to part two. Um, oh, does it? Okay. So I don't know. Because in the in the comics, there's a lot of different um, uh, tellings of who dies. Um, oh, and Spider Man's going to be in it too. I mean, I oh totally yeah. Well, I hope this new actor doesn't disappoint. I haven't seen Homecoming. I kind of want to, just because I'm curious. But I don't. I haven't liked a Spider Man actor since Tobey Maguire. I'm not gonna lie. I, I feel I mean, like that it's a lot better than the than the last two that they had. I, yeah, the one for. Uh, Civil War was all right. I, he was okay. Once again, I'm just more into the Tobey Maguire because that was supposed to be. He was like a more, almost yeah. more dark version of Spider-Man. Like they went a lot more into like the dark side of him, an emotional side. Which that I don't know. That really spoke to me a lot. And I just I love Tobey Maguire. So those were like for my me. I've right. always seen Spider-Man as this young kid who doesn't know what he's doing. So that's why I kind of like the actor that they had for. Civil War, which is the one that's going to be in Homecoming, um, mm-hmm. that's that's the Spider Man, uh, that's the Peter Parker I've always kind of thought of. I mean, I I love the original ones. I'm not, I'm not even gonna lie. Like you know who who doesn't? Those mm-hmm. are the best. <laughs> um, but I don't know. I'm I'm very interested to see where that one's going. But anyway, going back to Infinity War, um, I know in the comics that there's different. Because there's different sets of comics that tell the Infinity War mm-hmm. differently. Um, there's some where Iron Man dies. There's some where Captain America dies. Some where both of them die. Some where all the Avengers dies and only like the Guardians of the Galaxy survive and like Doctor Strange. Uh-huh. There's one where Doctor Strange kills Thanos. So there's all these different ones, and they can pick one of you know one of those, or oh, they yeah. can tell a completely new one, which is what I'm hoping for. Mm-hmm. That they tell something completely different than the comics. Um, that they have some influence from it, yeah. but I want a new story. I don't want just some retelling of the comics. But that's, that's just true. me personally. I think actually that's where I heard about the Captain America thing from was because one of my friends is, uh, you know, he he reads comics and he read like the original one where Captain America died. Uh, I th- I think that was the one that he read and told me about. So. I could be wrong. Once again, I'm just trying to remember, but yeah. Anyways, keep going. I'm distracted. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, no, no. It's yeah. all good. Um, but yeah, that, that, I mean, that's pretty much it. Um, you know, I mean, it's Avengers meets Guardians of the Galaxy meets Spider-Man meets Doctor Strange. Mm-hmm. I mean, who does not want that? Exactly. I mean, that's the best meets thing to Thanos, happen. Thanos, like that background character that you see all the time, like just kind of fading away in the movies. And I love that they build him up at the end of every movie. Yeah. Now, I something um, that kind of piqued my interest was... I, you've seen Guardians of the Galaxy 2, right? No, I have not. Uh, I don't believe it's out on DVD yet. So Okay. I, I don't always what? go to theaters because I can't quite afford it, but... Um, no, I've heard a few things about it. I heard it was like pretty much just as good as the first movie. Well, have you heard anything of the post credit? scenes that's no maybe i think josh did told me something about it once okay so i won't spoil exactly what it says um for the sake of you okay um but there there is something that is very interesting i mean if you've read the comics you'll understand what i'm what i'm getting at um is there is a character that is introduced at the end that 
is supposedly in one of the comics kills Thanos um, huh. when all of the other Avengers can't can't kill him from what I from what I remember correctly or he plays a huge part in Infinity War mm-hmm. um, so that's all I'm gonna say is that he's a new character that none of us have seen yet in the MCU but he's very big in the old 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 comics for Marvel. okay yeah I'm definitely yeah I did hear uh, from someone I think that they're starting to bring out some of those like uh, lower rated Marvel characters like the D list uh, like yeah um, oh god, Dark Hawk, I think. Was what oh it was. Yeah. yeah, and then like Inhumans and Captain yeah. Marvel and all. yeah, stuff like that. So that would be kind of cool to see. Um, I forget yeah, the though. guy's name though, but oh, okay. when I saw the when I saw that scene and what was going on in it, how they introduced him, I immediately knew it was him. <laughs> I was like, oh my god! I was, oh. I just can't wait to. See. I hope he's in Infinity War. I. Th- I think he'll be in part one, but they haven't confirmed that yet, so I'm assuming he'll be in Guardians 3 and then um, Infinity War 2. Okay. So, yeah, so I'll keep know. an eye out for that one. When Guardians of the Galaxy 2 comes out on uh, DVD, I'll pick it up and watch it. So, Actually, I'm sure my uncle would let me borrow a copy for as soon as it comes out, but yeah. So that, I'm, I'm excited to see that one. That does sound like fun. Um, and of course, Infinity War, definitely. You know, Every Marvel fan is going to be excited to see that one. Um, but yes, I think that's all there really is for this segment. So we'll go ahead and move on to a movie that we watched recently or a superhero movie that we watched recently. It doesn't matter if we've rewatched it or if we just watched it for the first time. So we can go and talk about whichever one we just recently watched. So I'll let you go first since I just went first on the last one. Okay. (laughs) And it was so fun. I was just talking about Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Uh, (laughs) That was the last superhero movie that I watched and it was in theaters. Um, I saw it like a week after it came out. Um, I have to say, I liked it better than the first one. Um, mostly because it it starts building up towards, um, you know, Infinity War. Um, but the the emotional... Or the emotions of the characters are more... I don't know, they're, they're not as... Like, hidden. They're more, like shown through the movie each character's emotions and how they're feeling about where they're at and and just the not the bonds the the relationships that each characters have with each other um a lot of them are tested you know there's all these different things with you know old friends and old enemies that are cool little nods to to other marvel characters um well what's the guy's name um Al Pacino. Uh, he's in it. Cool. Um, as an old character that I that I remember from the comics. Um, and there's a lot of emotions in this movie. It's a very emotional movie, especially towards the end. Um, since you haven't seen it, I'm not going to spoil mm. the plot because it is a pretty, pretty. They're pretty big. Re- <laughs> there's a pretty big reveal in it, but it is probably obvious if you've seen the trailer oh okay if you've seen a trailer um i think i I did see one anything about what the plot is about no not really (laughs) okay good (laughs) um don't watch the trailers then because there's one that will pretty much spoil the okay okay my bird went spastic there all right all right uh so starting over okay yeah so uh peter quill's um his emotional like mentality or his his basically everything about him is being questioned in this movie he, he's questioning himself he's questioning just everything he knows and his purpose and just all these other things that that really intrigued me watching the movie I, I wanted to know more about more about him and if you know these things were really true that were said about him um and you know where he where all these things and you know it's like wow i didn't know this about him and then it's just hard to explain with you know without spoiling things so i'm trying mm-hmm. to think of a way to explain it but basically it, he's just he's being tested throughout this movie this movie's more about him uh, um and it's focused on his character and building him as a leader 
um, for the group, and can he, you know, can he really be a leader um, of this gr- of this group? Um, and so that 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 was a great thing I saw for this movie. And of course, you know, Baby Groot. Oh yeah, who, yes. who doesn't love Baby Groot? Um, I that was, that was probably my favorite part of the movie was him, um, and even Rocket Raccoon too. His his story is kind of being, um, you know, dealt with in this movie too, and he his emotions are being, you know as I'm going to say, fondled with. Um, there, He's he's being tested throughout this movie, too, and, you know, his character is developing a lot. Mm. Um, same thing with Gamora, as well as Drax. Pretty much all of them are going through an emotional, like, just high right now. Like, high. It's, it's, it's much like what Suicide Squad mm-hmm. was trying to do. Oh, um, yeah. Talking about their backstories. However, this movie executed it very well. Mm. Uh, so that's something you got to look forward to. But I, I love the movie. I, pr- I think I would give it maybe an 8 out of 10, somewhere around there. All right. Yeah, like I said, I'll definitely watch that when it comes out of DVD. But for right now, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah, that does. that is a movie I'm definitely looking forward to watching, too. Still, just like I said, haven't watched yet because I don't really go out to theaters all that often. Um... But yeah, for me, a movie that I watched recently... Uh, or are you still talking about uh, Guardians? No, oh, no, I'm good. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, so a movie that I watched recently, it's uh, it's an older Marvel movie. But, well, I guess not really older, just a few years ago. But uh, the first Thor movie. Because I just finally... I started going through my movie collection recently, and I'm like... I just started picking out a bunch of movies that I wanted to rewatch Because a lot of them I watched as a child, and I didn't understand what was going on. So like, all right, I'll give a lot of these another shot and just kind of try to figure out what's going on with the story since I didn't really get much of that before. So X-Men was one of those. That's why I started talking about that one earlier. Um, and I just recently rewatched Thor, like I think last week, something like that, or earlier this week. Um, it was a good movie overall. Um, it, it needed to be there, of course, you know, for the story so you can get the backstory of how the Avengers started. Or, like, why there's, like, the villain in the story of how Loki became to be the villain. You needed that backstory. Um, but other than that, like, it's a standalone movie. Once again, like I said, Thor does not belong as a standalone character. It just didn't fit. Um, it was cool to see him go through, like, the transition earlier. Like I said, Doctor Strange went through, you know, being, like, all pompous and arrogant. And then gets beaten down, becomes, you know, weak and has to fight his way back up. So, that, that was kind of cool. Um... I just, I don't know, I didn't really care for the story. It felt too slow, but at the same time, it felt too fast. Like, the movie went by too quickly. Like, with the pace they took it out, you'd think it would be a longer movie. But it actually didn't really turn out to be that long of a screenplay, if I don't, I don't, if I remember correctly, anyways. I don't think it was that long. Um, so, that was, it was kind of disappointing, uh, honestly, because I remember it being pretty cool. I mean, I was still disappointed with it the first time. Because there wasn't really much of a build-up. Like, there wasn't really that much of a rising action or a climax. It was just kind of like a steady stream the whole movie. So there wasn't really much good storytelling going on there. Yeah. But once again, you did need that background to understand why Loki became the villain. So, overall, it didn't need to be in the Marvel Universe. But they could have done a lot better with it. Um, or at least find a way to shorten it. Because all the stuff with Jane, I don't know. It was just all really, really boring to be honest, and I don't now, know. You've seen the second Thor movie, right? No, after the first one, I didn't kind of, I didn't really want to watch the second one. I, I have it. I, I want to watch it. I'm going to rewatch it, but um, here, I'll look and it up. And then Ragnarok is the third one, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I do want to okay. see, okay, Thor the Dark World, that was the second one. Dark World, that's right. Okay, something that really, can, and I'm just going to say it, uh, I'm sure you don't mind, just because, you know, you've seen everything that comes after. Yeah. Um, is at the end, you know, every Marvel movie has that post credit scene. Mm-hmm. Um, at the end, um, Loki dies. Um, or not that the post credits, but at the end of the movie, Loki dies and Thor's, you know, upset, whatever. Yeah. That his brother died. Um, even though, like, he, all these horrible things he had done, you know, with the Chitauri and all that and Earth. But mm-hmm. then after the post credits, we see. Thor's father sitting on his throne and then like he ch- uh, he changes into Loki. Oh, um, yeah. And Loki's sitting on his throne and and 
I still, <laughs> I still didn't understand till this day what happened until recently, and I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, the trickster god. Yeah, you I gotta see what happened that, now. So. so, and I was like, oh wow. Yeah. Yeah, because up until that point, it was like just recently. I was like, wait, so wait, how is he? You know, and then I, I put two and two together, and I was like, okay, I got it. Yeah. No, and the build up they have for Ragnarok looks like a lot of fun too, because it was supposed to be. This was supposed to be Thor going against Odin, right? He was going against his own father. Yeah. Yeah, so that, that'll be a lot of fun. So, once again, really I like really that they have that the, uh, the collector in it, too. From oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember that one, okay. too. Um, but, yeah, so, I mean, that's, that was just kind of my opinion on Thor. Once again, needed to be there, but there was so much more they could have done with it and made it a lot better. Um, Chris Hemsworth, I'll, I'll still give, is still a great actor. He just... Uh, he wasn't given a very good script, so. Um, but that was that was also kind of the early stages of the Marvel universe too. That was like, what the third movie to come out for the Avengers? Because they went yeah, Iron, Man, Iron Man and then Iron Hulk. Thor, I believe. Yeah, I don't I don't remember the exact order of it, but it was, it was 2011. So I'll, I'll give Marvel a little slack for that. They were still kind of just getting into it, and this was their first time doing Thor, so. Oh, again. Like I said, I'll give him a little slack for that one. It was kind of a, you know, 50-50. So, um, that's all we got for the recently watched movies. So, we'll go ahead and move on to any superhero movie that we'd like to mention. And I, um, I'm going to piss off one of my friends right now. I am going to talk about Logan. And oh, gosh. Because there were uh, a number of discontinuities within that film and just mistakes that Marvel made overall... Or just things that they oh, should have done so much better. Like, uh, for one, Charles Xavier. I haven't seen Days of Future Past or um, First Class. But I don't remember hearing from either of them that they revive Professor X or Charles Xavier. Because in the third one, he dies. So, I mean, yeah. I don't remember hearing any mention of them bringing him back. Which would make no sense. Because in Logan, Charles Xavier is still alive. And there's this incident that happened where he accidentally massacred, like, a bunch of people in, like, New York, I think. So, there was some discontinuity there. It just, I don't know, I didn't, I didn't like it. Um, and then, of course, at the end, his death. That, that wasn't discontinuity or anything. It's just they could have done so much better with that, because his death was so cheesy. He, he just gets slammed on this branch of tree sticking out of, a, you know, a tree that fell over on the ground, and that's how he dies. I was like, really? That's where you're gonna end? That's how you're gonna end Wolverine? Like, they should have given him a like super glorified death. It was like fitting for him. The tree is not fitting for him at all. Um, and then, of course, just like the whole concept of the film or of his illness, anyways, is that the adamantium is what's killing him. I mean, come on, that. Oh, to me, that was just yeah. so much baloney. It's like. He's been dealing with this for so long, and it's like, apparently Marvel doesn't understand the concept of regeneration. It essentially is immortality in itself, because it's like, your cells will just instantly regenerate. That's the whole point of it. So, like, well, yeah, that's why if, even in, if you in have the Marvel that, comics, it, yeah. Deadpool regenerated from, like, one cell. That exactly. Has, like, exactly. And it's like, if there really is a poison in your body, your cells would just regenerate quicker than they would be dying... And it would just cast out the poison. That's your. That's what your body would naturally do. It would try to cast out that poison as quick as possible. But since his regenerated cells are so quick, they would just be regenerating as soon as they'd be disappearing. So it like nothing would change. So I just I found that to be a really flawed concept. Like the fact that it took so long to kick in also doesn't make sense. But you're like, if it's really that poisonous, like he's covered in it. Every or every one of his bones is covered in adamantium. You'd think that poison would have kicked in a lot quicker. It would not have taken that long. Because um, I think the movie was set in like 2030-something? I can't remember exactly when it was set. But but like it took years before it eventually kicked in. And it's just like, yeah. how? So I'm looking and apparently it's just a different version of Charles Xavier. which Is it? Yeah. Because... But... It, yeah, it's apparently a different version of him, and that it could have even been a different version of uh, Wolverine, too. Oh, that doesn't make sense, though, because they made references to the X-Men movies. Like, they... 
Yeah, it's that. talking about it here how it, it it just doesn't make sense. Yeah, no, like when it comes to the X Men movies, uh, Marvel has so many discontinuity problems. Like, if you watch the first three X Men movies, you can point out so many different well, discontinuity and, and errors, and then it the like it just keeps going. That they don't really. They're not really focused on it. Yeah, like they should try to disregard their previous movies. They're like, okay, so we did this in here before. That was a mistake. We're just going to ignore it. And it's like, but then you because just Marvel, the whole thing. Because I know Marvel, Marvel, Marvel does, you know, Avengers, Guardians, all that. Uh huh. And Marvel Studios does, like, Deadpool and yeah. all that. And I know they're not the same, like, writers and stuff. And That's I know true. Fox owns. Rights for X Men, so they probably have a say in that. That would make a lot more sense as to why they didn't turn out all that good. Uh, the first one was just fine, but then it's like, like if they just left that as a standalone movie, it would have been perfect. But then they introduced the second and third ones, and then it's like you start getting those errors, and you just start screaming at yourself, "Why do you do this to yourselves?" Yeah. Because from what I'm aware, is that the like X Men movies and all these other movies are made by not indie. Not indie directors, but uh-huh. just um, like up directors coming. that aren't associated with the main Marvel yeah. universe. So I can see where it can differ, but yeah, true. I think for big titles like Deadpool, they made sure that they were going to have like a good direct set of directors. Mm-hmm. Um, but it seems like that just for for Logan and you know all these other movies that they just don't care. They're just trying to kill them off so they can move on to other stuff. I mean, honestly, X Men could have been like, a brilliant series. It could have been, like, almost as good as the Avengers, to be honest, because, I mean, they, they had so much stuff going for them, and then they just went way off the rails with it and got too crazy, and... Well, and that's why I never got into X-Men myself, because, like, none of it made se- none of it made sense. Like, yeah. well, the there thing were things is... that kept going back and forth, and then you'd watch one movie, and then they'd say, oh, wait, no, that one doesn't count count this one i'm like wait uh-huh. so which one counts which one doesn't yeah well they I mean, kind of like once again they did that whole censorship thing they kind of built it for the younger audience so they're like okay younger audience doesn't care about story so we're just gonna focus on action pretty much is what happened so it was kind of another warcraft deal almost but you know once again not as bad not nearly as bad but i don't know like they they tried to appeal too much to the younger audience i'm talking like 13 below um Rather than 13 plus, which is what they should have been tailoring to, or tailoring to, but they didn't. Um, so that was that kind of sucked a lot. It um, just seems like a lot of directors are are one doing it. They're trying to get as much money as possible, so they take a big staple like pretty Logan, much they slap it on a some on a script, and they say, "There, there's your movie." And yeah. Because people will watch it if it's that's yeah. Well, and like. For Logan, I heard so many people saying how, like, the ending made them cry, and I I couldn't even, like, muster up a tear, like, tried to force myself to cry at the end, so, like, I get to the end of it, and I had no emotional attachment to anyone in that movie. Not even Wolverine anymore, and Wolverine used to yeah. be, like, one of my favorite heroes. It's just, like, they screwed him up, and I was so mad. But, yeah, no, once again, I mean... It's one of those things where it's like if the right people had been behind it, it would have been good. Like, I'm, I'm just going to make a quick video game reference here. Modern Warfare 3 is kind of like the same thing. It's like the same idea. If Sledgehammer hadn't been introduced, that game would have been so much better. It's kind of like what happened here. Yeah. You know, if they had had the right people backing it up, it would have been such a great film. But they just... they ah, Yeah, I don't know. The, I'll, I'll admit, though, the image of Logan was great. I loved that really, like, gritty... Uh, extremely well focused high definition footage like that that looked really good I'll admit that image was awesome um, but in terms of actual like enjoyment I I'd, I'd probably rate the movie like a five out of ten just like in yeah. all honesty so yep so any any movie you wanted to mention before we get into um, the last bit here can't really I mean Um, what was? Um, can't really. I mean, I guess Justice League. Um, something I kind of wanted to just mention is that I really hope they don't just you know vomit, do a, do a pull a Suicide Squad. 
Yeah. Yes. Where they just you know slap backstories together, and I want it to be yeah, sure. you know equivalent of the Avengers or better if what? possible. Right there. Podcast. Um, oh, this is garbage. You know, they don't touch up too much on the backstory because that's what they had the previous movies for. Um, but they kind of refresh you with, oh, they are this person, and this is how they got here, and now they're gonna do this. Um, but then I also want, you know, want them to have emotions. I don't want them to just be these walking machines of death, just mm-hmm. killing everything, and then that's your movie. No, I, I want, you know, emotions. I want, you know, the villain, you know, playing with their minds, you know, kind of like how Loki did with the Avengers, mm-hmm. all of them. Um, so I, I, I just, I just don't want them to screw it up. Um, I'm kind of looking forward to it, but I'm putting my expectations low mm-hmm. just so I don't get. That's too kind of like the way to watch DC movies nowadays. Is like you have to lower your expectations a lot because what you see in the trailer is not at all what you're gonna see in the movie. Oh yeah, and it's just, yeah, they've they've really gone downhill. Their TV shows are all right. But once again, even those like starting in the later seasons, they start to get really ridiculous. Um, man, anything else you wanted to comment on about that before we get into the last segment here? Um, nah, I'm, that, that was my spiel. All right, so uh, we'll be talking. I'm just gonna talk about the short film of the month really quick because you know we're gonna be doing these for every podcast. Just a quick short film for you guys to go check out and enjoy. Um, I don't remember who this one was by, but it's called The Gunfighter. I'll have a link to it down in the description and. It was a western short film, but it was just, it was a comedy, really. It was, um, I w- I'll try not to spoil it. It was just, it was funny. It was really good. So I definitely recommend you watch it. I think it was only, like, nine minutes long. So it was definitely worth watching. Um, like I said, I really enjoyed it. And, it, like I said, it was well worth the time. They really made me laugh. They they titled it, uh, the best short film ever, which I, I would not go so far as to say that. But it was definitely enjoyable and definitely worth watching. So go check it out if you haven't yet. Um, but I believe that's all we have for this month, so thank you guys all for stopping in. Hope you all enjoyed the video, and we'll uh, see you all in the next one. See you guys. Peace out.